I had a request about IPv6. The request went something like, can you do a quick video on this just so I can get started? I would love to. IPv6 is 128 bits in length. A portion of that 128 bits is the network and the other portion that's not being used for network bits are host bits. That part is identical to IP version 4. What's a little bit different besides the length is that we represent an IPv6 address in hexadecimal. Hexadecimal, each character starting with 0 and going through F, F would be our equivalent of 15 in decimal, each character represents 4 bits. So this 2 is representing 4 bits, this 0 is representing 4 bits, this 0 is representing 4 bits and so forth. And if you have any leading zeros, for example in this grouping of 16 bits we have 0, 0, 1, 2. Because the leading bits are zeros you don't actually have to write them in. You can do a little shortcut. And if you have multiple groups, multiple 16-bit groups that are zero, you can represent them by using a colon, colon, and then the system will figure it out. For example, this IP address, slash 64, means the network bits are 64. So 2001, colon, 12, colon, colon says, okay, I've got 16 bits here, I've got 16 bits here, I know what they are, and because this is colon, colon, I'm figuring out that there's, you know, 32 bits more for the network that I need to figure out and they'd be all zeros right here and that's how it works you can shortcut them a little bit because I want to make this demo concise I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the implementation of the IPv6 and then you can go ahead and practice it for yourself and get started so on this network right here between R1 and R2 we're gonna use network 2001 colon 12 slash 64, 64 bit network, and we'll use dot one and dot two for R1 and R2 respectively. On R3, we'll add between R3 and R2, we're gonna use network 2001 colon 23 and all the rest zeros. So again, the network is 64 bits in length, 16 bits of it is gonna be 2001, 16 bits is 2003 or 23, and the next two groupings of 16 bits each are all gonna be zero. And then we'll just configure it up and we'll set up routing and away we go. Let's go to the interface. All right, on R3 is where I'd like to start. So on R3, let me do a couple things. Let's go ahead and do a default interface for FA0 slash 1. That'll wipe out anything that might have been there and we'll go into interface. Actually, before we go into interface config, we need to enable on a new router, we need to enable IPv6 routing. So IPv6, unicast routing, now it's willing to do routing for IPv6. We'll go to interface FA0 slash 1, make sure it's not shut down super it's not shut down and now we'll give it an IPv6 address IPv6 address and we agreed on R3 it would be 2001 the 23 for the next 16 bits colon colon and a 3 for the actual host and we'll use slash 64 and what that means is that we have this network 2001 colon 23 and a whole bunch of zeros. We also have the remainder 64 bits because it's 120 bits total, which is 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon 3. And we don't have to put all the extra zeros in because the colon colon sells it A. You figure it out. It's all zeros between here and the end. So that's our IPv6 address. What we've, we've enabled IPv6 unicast routing. I'm also going to enable OSPF on this interface. IPv6 OSPF 1, that's the process ID, area 0. Now before I press enter, I just want to let you know, I've already configured R1 and R2 exactly the same way. I went to all of their Ethernet interfaces, assigned them an IPv6 address just like this, I enabled OSPF, and I also did IPv6 unicast routing just as you see here in their global configs. When I press enter, if I've done it all correctly, I should get a neighborship. And that's R2. One thing you'll notice is that even though it's IPv6, our I, it's IPv6 is OSPF, we still are using IPv4 IDs for our neighbors. So let's just verify that we have these pieces in place. Let's do a show IPv6 interface for FA0 slash 1. And here is our global address that we configured. And up here is something that's absolutely fascinating that I wish somebody explained to me better 
about eight or nine years ago when I was learning about this. This is called a link local address. It also is a layer three IPv6 address and you get it free. There's some uh, a formula that actually convert, you know, figures out your host portion from your MAC address. We'll leave that for another discussion. But why would you need two IPv6 addresses, a link local and a global address? Well, the global address is reachable outside of the local network, so you can route to it. IPv4 is a is a um, a global type IP addressing scheme. Uh, IPv6 global addresses are the same thing. You can reach them. You can route to those networks and it's wonderful. On the other hand, this link local address right here is not reachable by anybody unless they live on your street. What do you mean live on my street? Well, this link local address is great if I need to talk directly to any other IPv6 address uh, devices on that segment. So if I have five interfaces, I'm going to have five global addresses and I'm also going to have five link local addresses, one for each interface. So it's like a private party communication mechanism that we can use to talk to devices on our own street. We still have MAC addresses. Those haven't gone away, not at all. They're still using them at layer two. This that I have highlighted is another, a second IPv6 layer three address. Okay, so having said that, we've enabled IPv6 on our devices. Um, we've given an IP address, we've set up routing, let's do a show, IPv6 route, and I'm going to limit it just to OSPF learned routes. And we have one of them. So show IPv6 route OSPF, it says, gee, uh, we've got this network, it's called 2001-12. Now we should be able to ping a device in the 2001-12 network. That would be our ones interface or our twos interface. If we do a ping, to 2001 colon 12 colon colon 1 or 2 because that's the only two addresses that are there it should work also because that address is so funny it knows that it's not IPv4 it knows it's not Apple talk it knows it's not IPX or any other one of the protocols it could be it knows it's IPv6 so I don't have to put the keyword ping IPv6 in the string because it knows and there's our response so that's a basic implementation of IPv6. It boils down to this. Let's do a do show history on this. Do, uh, let's, let's do this. Let me show you the interface. Show run interface FA01. We gave it an IPv6 address. We added it to OSPF and we enabled IPv6 unicast routing in global config and that's it. So that's your basic primer on getting IPv6 up and running. There's a whole world volumes actually that we could discuss about multicast addresses and neighbor discovery and that'll have to be in another discussion. But I want to make sure I got this video to you today uh, as you requested a basic quick start for getting IPv6 up and running. Hope you enjoy it and have a great day.